could have reached Benghazi because nothing was ever headed to Benghazi. No U.S. military asset was ever deployed to Benghazi despite the order of the Secretary of Defense at 7 o'clock that night. So Washington had access to real-time information, but yet somehow they thought the fighting had subsided. Washington had access to real-time information, but somehow they thought these fighters were going to evacuate, even without the remains of the ambassador. City of Six News contributor Kimberly Dvorak is here. Now, Kimberly, I see you shaking your head when you see Trey Gowdy giving that report. Absolutely. It's really disingenuous to think that the military would not be preparing any kind of response to this. In fact, that's what they do. They send out, in essence, 911 calls. They jump into action. What really happened here in where the, you know, where things kind of got jumbled up in the red tape is between the CIA and the State Department, not the military. The military trains for this. The folks in Benghazi were asking for help, correct? And correct. the message I mean, didn't get were, through? Or the... They were pleading for help. No, the, the messages went out, and they went out to stations all around the world. So you had commanders all, all around the world in the United States military putting together actions and going in plans and how to get them out and, is, and extract them, whether they were in Tripoli or Benghazi. So what happened? So what happened is, you know, it just, it, it looks like the, the the red tape, they wanted to argue over what kind of uniforms they were wearing. They, they didn't want it to look improper. And all of the talking, meanwhile, these brave soldiers are fighting for their lives. We lost four of these lives. Um, and I think that... Uh, you know, it's uh, my experience with the military that, you know, they're the tip of the spear on this. I mean, they run two gunfire, and in fact, the two SEALs that ended up um, dying in the end, you know, you had one that, you know, commandeered a plane running to the gunfire from Tripoli, got on a private plane, got to Benghazi, and in the end was credited for saving dozens of lives because there was a CIA annex there. So if they're trying to pass the blame, who do you think they're trying to protect in this incident? Uh, Probably politicians and, and probably uh, the cabinet members and, and people who were in charge of, you know, what whatever they were doing. They, there's, they still haven't really answered the question as a journalist. We always ask why. Why were we there in the first place? Everybody had left, so they never really answered that question. And, uh, the, the you know, we, we look at the, the White House's response to this, and they just did not want to answer that question whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, and just let me just, you know, end with this. I talked to a, a colonel about this, and they said that if all they had was a rowboat to get to get to Benghazi, they would have put that rowboat in the water, even though they knew it wouldn't get there, but they would be would rowing. So action would definitely be taking place here, and the military are very professional people, and they're the ones that have to sit on their hands and watch this report and say, this is just absolutely wrong. We, we prepare for every instance, and we have backup contingency plans as well. So this is a... It, it's very, very concerning that they went after the military on this because I don't think the military is to blame on this one. Thank you so much, Kimberly. We do yeah. love our military here. Yeah, in and they keep us safe, and it's Fourth of July and all That's that. Right. So I mean, and we trust that they do a great job, and they do an awesome job for us. Thank you so much, Kimberly Borak. Thank you. Well, coming.